write um, hydrogen and then from Arizona the State University. I uh, work at the Vienna and VHS Neuro Labs. Today I'm going to present my work on the relative technical detection by reinforcement learning. People spend most of their time on social media and social media such as Twitter are primary source of news. Uh, they provide a platform that uh, most outlets can share news with their users, but also miscreants can misuse these platforms to uh, propagate fake news. And the increasing number of fake news gave rise to fake news detection models. And currently we have many fake news detection models that can detect fake news with a high accuracy. However, when it comes to domain adaptation, there is still room for improvement. And fake news detection models that are trained on one domain cannot generalize well and they won't work on other domains. Uh, the main reason for this is because uh, these models use the dependent features to detect fake news. As an example, uh, fake news net is one of the most popular data sets that is being used to train fake news detection models. This data set has two main sources, PolitiFact that contains political news and Gossip Club that contains entertainment news, for example, news about celebrities. If we train a model on uh, quality facts, uh, it won't work well on Google and vice versa. So we might ask why not combine these two data sets and train a model on them. That won't work because uh, usually in real world scenarios, when we train a uh, fake news detection model on, um, on a source domain and want to find it for target domain collecting data, for the target domain is really hard. Uh, we should collect uh, training data and annotate it, so it's very costly, and usually we don't have much resources. And another problem is that constantly training the model, uh, training the model on a very large data set is uh, very costly. So to address these two challenges, we designed a model called Reinforced Adaptive Learning Fake News Detection, or real FND. Our model has two main components, a news article encoder and a reinforcement adaptation component. I'm going to introduce each component separately, then I'll introduce the training procedure. First, here I show the uh, news article encoder. Uh, the goal of this component is to get uh, the news as input and generate a news representation. It has three parts. The first part is BERT that gets the news text as input and generates the news representation. The next component is a hierarchical attention network that gets the news comments as input and generates the comments representation. And finally, we have the user news interaction component that gets a binary vector indicating which users interacted with the news. And it generates the user news interaction representation for us. We then combine these three representations and pass it through a feed forward neural network to decrease the dimension of the news article. And uh, at the end, we have the news article representation as E prime. Uh, this news representation can be used to train a fake news um, classifier. Next, uh, I introduce the reinforcement adaptation components. Uh, that its goal, uh, its goal is to get every news representation, change it in a way to make it domain adaptive. So its main goal is to remove domain dependent features from the news representation that are learned through the last step by the news article encoder. To define a reinforcement learning agent, we need to uh, understand four main terms environment, state, action, and the reward function, which is the most important one. The environment is where the agent keeps interacting with. By this interaction, the agent uh, gathers experiences, and using those experiences, it can learn on how to remove the domain dependent features from these representations. In our case, the agent chooses an action 
by changing one of the values in the means representation to another one. We have the new means representation we pass it through a reward function that has the domain classifier and the vectors classifier to determine how useful and domain independent the news representation is. And it calculates the reward value and passes the reward value and the value state to the agent as an experience. And using this experience, the agent learns to uh, modify the news representation in a way to make it domain adaptive. Next, we define the state. And here we define the state as the current news representation. Next, we want to define the actions of the agent. Uh, we want to define the action as changing the news representation to another one, but it creates an unlimited number of actions and it would be infeasible to train an enforcement learning agent in this case. So we limit the number of actions by changing only one element at a time by a small value. For example, if uh, this is our news representation, the agent chooses to change the second value from 0.7 to 0.75. So at every time step, the agent only changes one element of the news representation. Finally, we have the reward function, which is uh, designed based on the confidence of the fake news classifier and the domain classifier. The goal of this reward function is to increase the confidence of the domain Sorry, uh, the goal of this reward function is to increase the confidence of the fake news classifier by decreasing the confidence of the dummy classifier. And if the agent manages to decrease the confidence of the dummy classifier, it means that it has successfully removed domain independent features from the news representations. We also have two parameters of and beta in our reward function that can be used to control the balance between the utility of the uh, news representation and the main adaptiveness of the uh, news representation. Now that we have defined our uh, uh, new components, uh, the training procedure is as follows. We first pre-train the news encoder, um, um, by pre-training the only pre-train BERT and the hierarchical attention network box. Then, um, after the pre-training, we train the fake news classifier and the domain classifier using the uh, news representations that are occurred from the last step. Then having the uh, fake news classifier and the domain classifier and the news representations from step one, we train the reinforcement learning agent uh, that, um, that's able to better the news representations in a way to make them domain adaptive. Next, we design experiments to evaluate our proposed model. Our new experiments we aim to answer three main questions. The first question is that how will our method and previous method work on our social media data in a single domain setting? The second question is uh, and aims to answer how well our method and previous method works on a cross domain setting where we train a model on a source domain and test it on a target domain. Finally, the third question tries to answer how the auxiliary information contribute to the improvement of fake news detection uh, performance. To answer these three questions, we design experiments using the fake news net data set. However, uh, in fake news net data set, the quality facts part of it is not very really, uh, rich, so we enhance it by combining it with annotated quality fact data set. Here we can see the uh, first set of results that tries to answer the first question on the performance of our proposed model and the baselines in single domain setting. If we look at these two columns, we can see that when we train a model, uh, for example, on the same domain and test it on the same domain, the performance is pretty good and the F1 score is between 80 to 90% for uh, gossip curve and quality facts. However, when we move to Cross domain setting, where we train a model on a source domain and test it on a target domain. In a single domain setting, uh, 
uh, model uh, the baseload don't perform very well. Uh, the FNS score is somewhat between 60 to 70 percent. To answer the next question, we design experiments to sorry. To answer the second question, we design experiments in cross domain setting. In this case, we lose 30% of target data for training our model on baselines. Here we can see the results in this table. The models that are above the red line are designed for single domain settings, while the models that are below the red line are designed for cross domain fake news detection. And here we can see that. Uh, our proposed model performs very well, and it can detect uh, fake news on um, uh, both source and target domains. Finally, we show the effects of auxiliary information, such as uh, comments and user news interaction. Here, we uh, design several baselines to show the effects of auxiliary information. The first baseline is called adversarial reload, which is the same as our model, but instead of reinforcement learning, we used adversarial training. The next one is real minus a, where that we remove the news comments and user news interactions from the um, from the news representations. And finally, we have the adversarial real minus a, which is similar to adversarial real, but without um, news comments and user news interactions. Comparing uh, the first two with the other ones shows that uh, including um, news comments and user news interactions increases the performance of fake news detection models. And comparing the uh, enforcement learning model with the adversarial training model shows that the enforcement learning model performs a little bit better than the other one. And this is uh, for where we train the model on gossip crop and tested on PolitiFact, and this is for the reverse case. Uh, thank you for attending my presentation. Uh, I would be happy to answer uh, any questions that you have uh, after this. Uh, session or offline.